So welcome to another um, episode of Treeline Pursuits video cast. Um, this is going to be a little bit different of an episode. I know we've been doing a lot of DIY hunting topics um, and some strategies and mostly packs and gear and some of the things as we get ready for the season. But today we're going to take a little bit of a break. Um, one of my new passions is fly fishing since we moved to Montana. So I'm going to try to make today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make some DIY rod holders, fly rod holders for my raft. And so I've got some electrical conduit, inch and a quarter. Seems to be about the right diameter for the rods to slide in and out real well. Um, and I'm kind of laying them out here on the boat. And we're going to uh, kind of test it, you know, from the seat, how the rods will slide in and out. First thing I'm going to do before I start cutting the groove um, and the channel for the rod is I'm going to bend these, these, these conduit pieces. So how we're going to do that is, or at least how we're going to attempt to do that, is we're going to line these up on the raft. I know you can't see this very well, but I've got them approximately where they're going to be strapped onto the raft frame. And I've marked the spot where I'm going to begin to make the bend and where I'm going to end the bend. What's important about doing that is where I'm going to apply the heat, because I'm going to use a heat gun. I've just got a standard 1200 watt Ace brand heat gun. And we're going to heat this section between the two marks, and we're going to bend the tubes both inward and slightly downward. Because the rods, when the rods slide in, as long as the bend is not too significant for the little bit of time you're going to be rat floating and etc. Um, a slight bend in your rod, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And most of the rod holders that you see commercially built are bent. So we're going to bend them, we're going to bend them slightly in and slightly down. And how we're going to do that without having any crease in the pipe, um, at least my theory is, is we're going to fill these two electrical conduits with sand. I've got some sand here. And we're going to fill those with sand. We're going to cap the ends. And we're going to tape up the other end so it's solid. I'm going to pack them solid with sand. And then as we heat them, as we bend them, my hope is it won't allow any compression uh, inside the tubes. So we're going to do that first. So um, we'll be right back to show you that part. So we're going to get on top of this ladder so that we can fill these up with sand and I can really pack them down. They're 10 feet long. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave them at 10 feet for now. Um, as we get our rods and we see how they've been, we can make adjustments on the length at any time. So we're gonna try this without a funnel. I'm just using a regular pitcher and we're just filling it up. I'm using play sand. Um, just got from Lowe's. Any place you can get it. These tubes will get a little bit heavy once they're filled. But that's all right. It's filling a little bit, no big deal. I've got so much snow here in Montana that a little extra sand on my driveway ain't gonna, certainly isn't gonna hurt much. All right, I have no idea what one pitcher of sand did at this point. So I'll fill up another pitcher and we'll be right back. It's feeling fairly heavy. The key is get it nice and compacted so when the bend happens, it'll do it without compression. I got the play sand so it wasn't quite, oh, there we go, perfect. That didn't take only about a pitcher. It only took about a pitcher um, and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to pack it down a little bit without getting too aggressive. I don't want to break the cap I have on the other end. So that is packing down nice. Okay, so I'm going to top it off. Pack it one more time, just a little bit. All right. So I feel pretty good about that. So now I'm going to grab... Some tape, really. There's no, no. There's 
certainly no rocket science to this section. You just want to make sure this sand, once we start manipulating this thing, that the sand does not come out. And we'll do tube number one. I'm making two rod holders, so we'll do tube number one. And then we will take the sand out and use it in tube number two, where we use the sand. Okay, so there we go. Our tube is now full of sand. It's significantly heavier than it was. So we'll move in. Next up, we'll move in for the heat, heat and bend. Okay, so here we are, we're at the, we've got our tube filled up with sand now, we've got our end cap on and we've got it taped and it's pretty solid with sand inside. We've got it clamped in, just, uh, this is a work, uh, a work X Pegasus bench, any, any clamp type thing. So what we're gonna do, I marked these marks on the top. This is the direction I want um, the tubes to face. Just for cosmetic purposes, I put the writing on the tube down below so it looks good on the raft. It doesn't really matter that much, but I've got it facing down, so I put my marks on the top so I know where I need to apply the heat between those two marks. The first bend I'm gonna make, I'm gonna bend it slightly in and slightly down. I don't wanna go too much too quick. Um, this will probably cut in and out on this part because it's gonna take a little bit to get it nice, heated up. So we'll get this thing going. And again, you don't want to get too, you just want to keep applying the heat. It takes a while for this to work. Um, and like I said, we will uh, probably cut the video quite a few times during the heating process. Um, again, they make a little bit more powerful heat guns, but if you're only going to use it a few times, time is no big deal. Okay, here we are back in the garage. I just finished bending the pipes. I still have them strapped up. What I ended up doing was heating one at a time and slowly bending them in and down. And then once I had them hot, um, I got them on the boat, strapped them on with some straps, as you can tell. Um, then as they were still hot, after a few minutes, they, um, Bended real nicely and matched up real nice. Um, there's a little bit of a texture to them from the heat gun because I got a little close here and there. But, but it, you know, for do-it-yourself, it's really nice. So you're going to come on down. So down here, at the very end, I've marked the ends with X's on the top. And we'll go downstairs and we will start the process of um, making the channels that the rods will lay in and the attachments to keep them, keep them in there. So as you can see, um, they run the full length and then they start to make the curve at the end. So far, I think they're turning out really nice. Next up, we will remove the sand and we'll uh, get busy on making the uh, trays for the fly rods. Okay, now we're down in the basement of Treeline Pursuits World Headquarters here in Missoula, Montana. And um, I'm going to show you first, I'm going to show you one of the ones that I just finished up cutting the trays on. And then we're going to go into, um, we're going to do some video of the actual prep and how we did cut it. You can see that um, I've got this groove cut. Um, not quite halfway, I would say three quarters. I measured each side. I used a T-square. Um, I use a drywall T-square, it's four feet, and it allowed me to put it over the end, and it allowed me to draw a really nice straight line. Um, I cut the grooves, or the tray, 48 inches, um, end to end, and I left approximately um, four and a half inches on the end. So four and a half feet, and then I grooved out each end a little bit. Um, and what I ended up doing was I cut it with a cutoff wheel on a Dremel. Once I laid the marks, I cut it at a downward angle all the way on both sides. That way, that, the downward angle made it easier to come back after I cut out the tray and switch the Dremel to a sander, the small sander. And I sanded the, um, 
the beveled edges and made them really smooth so there's no catching of your line or, or cutting your line or damaging your rods. And I particularly worked on the entrance hole where the rod will slide in. And so I made it very smooth uh, and I sloped it so it would accept the rod better. So I'm gonna take this rod, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna slide in. The four foot, I may end up going a little bit more than four foot, but the four foot seemed to work really well. The inch and a quarter allow you to put your rod in with your eye, the eyes down or up. So you can see it slides in and when I, to go to the end, I still, with the nine, this is a, uh, I don't know what this rod is here. This is a nine foot rod. So I still got a pretty good, you know, one foot opening. So you slide it in and then it slides back and it catches on the butt of the rod. The next I'll do is I'll, I'm going to put a bungee system on um, and we'll show that when I finish up my second one. But I wanted to show you the rod coming in and coming out. Very easy to do. Um, again, I wanted to protect my rods. A lot of guys, uh, a lot of guys, the few DIY videos that I've seen have gone longer than four foot for the tray. Um, I figured you can always go longer if you need to. It's real hard to make it shorter. So I'm gonna start with four foot and see how that rod comes out while I'm sitting in my seat in my raft and see how easy it is for me to get it in and out. I'm gonna install these with just some straps on my frame um, and I'm gonna test it out, kinda of see how it gets. But right now we're gonna start four foot. Um, next up, we'll start going through the process of how I made these. Okay. The first thing we're going to do um, to get these trays cut is we're going to measure uh, four foot from the mark. So I said before I went four and a half inches. I'm going to double check that. I want to make sure that the, uh, you know, that they look uniform and I mean, I guess it wouldn't matter, but I want them to look uniform. Okay, so from that mark, we want to go four foot. We want to go four foot from four and a half inches from the end. Again, it's not rocket science here. It's, the trays can be a little off because you're gonna sand them and kind of and kind of work with them and kind of shape them up um, when you do it. So again, I like to have a chair. So I'm setting down here. I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to go ahead and back this up. My clamp. Okay, so again, I'm using a drywall square because it really was what the ticket was to lay these out. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Honestly, I'm not really. Um, doing anything too dramatic. So I'm measuring up. It's about three quarters of the way up. I'm drawing a guideline on the side and I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I've got to finish the marks out to the four foot mark. I didn't quite get it because of the four and a half inches on the end. So I'll finish those marks out. Okay, so I've got those marked. Now we're gonna put a, a mark on the, where the end so I don't go past that when I cut. Again, we're gonna shape this up when we cut it, so. 
for cutting purposes, I am going to um, move this back in just a little bit. I'm going to cut about half of it on both sides. And then I'll cut the other half just so it's nice and stable in my vise. I'm not going to try to make the full four length cut the first time. Okay, I'm going to change out my, right now I have my sanding bit in my Dremel. Um, I'm going to change out to my cutting blade um, and I'll be right back. We're back. Um, Again, I want to warn you with this Dremel. The Dremel seems to be that the cutout blade works really good on this PVC. You just go nice and slow. Unfortunately, it's really dusty and it gets a lot in your face because of the direction I'm cutting. What I like to do is I like to hold my finger as a gauge on the bottom of the pipe and I just go right up the line and it just keeps it nice and smooth instead of trying to freehand it. So what I'm doing is I'm just basically, I've got my fingers and I'm up against the pipe as a gauge and I'm just working my way up the line to about the two and a half, two, mark, two foot mark. And then I'm gonna switch around to the other side um, and then we'll, then we'll finish up. So again, it gets a little dusty and gets a lot of dust in your face. Uh, and again, when you cut, I'm cutting with a downward angle on the blade, probably, oh, 45 degrees. So that when I go to sand, it's already got a nice bevel in the cut. And again, you want to wear some glasses. I'm wearing glasses so I can see and protection at the same time. It cuts really easy. The finger with the guy works extremely well. Okay, that went extremely well. So now we will do a close up on this other side um, as we cut it. All right, now we're on the other side of the of the groove, and we've got this side cut, and we're going to cut up this side to about the two and a half mark. Okay, so we've got about two feet. So when we come back, I'll have it all cut. We'll cut it up and then I'll show you how we do the sanding. So now we're back um, at the tube. And you can see I've cut this top piece out now. So um, we can remove that. And I can kind of just get rid of some of the fibers that are inside here. Uh, again, it's really dusty process, um, but it's, it makes it real uh, nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I've switched the tips back to a little sander and I'm going to sand the inside and the edges we're going to bevel it out a little bit and make it take all the edges out and swim then we're going to clean up the very um, where you put the rod in and where the butt goes um, so we're going to work on that we'll work on that now and on your sander you want to run it at I've been running this one about three quarters of speed if you run it much faster than that, it's hard to control and it really can dig in. If you run it much slower than that, it gets jumpy and it leaves it real rough. So I found that about three quarters of the speed works really well on the Dremel. On the cutoff tool, I used it at full speed.
You can see I'm just working this up. You can see that I'm just working the edges. I'm just going with my finger and I'm just kind of really making sure it's smooth so I don't have anything catching on it. So we're gonna work our way back and um, uh, finish it up. I'm gonna grind it all up and then we come back, um, we'll look at the finished product and we'll start talking about how we're gonna put um, the, the rod straps or the bungee and how we're gonna kind of design and, and do that. Okay, now we're back. Um, we finished up the groove now completely and I've kind of wiped it out so you can see um, kind of a little bit more of the finer details. So we're gonna get in a little bit closer so you can kind of see how we did this. Uh, again, you can see how we've um, curved and really smooth. This particular junction is really important with your piece. This is where your rod will be going in, in and out all the time. So I paid particularly close attention to the area around here and how smooth this is. I spent some extra time with the Dremel here. Again, you can see we're about three quarters of the way up on the pipe um, here. And it goes on down four feet from there to the end. And you can see on this electrical conduit, it actually works out kind of nice, is I also um, smoothed this out real well in here. And then on the end, it's got the flange where you connect the electrical. The reason that I like the electrical so much is, one, it's gray. It matches the, the pipe being a little better on your boat. Um, doesn't look so uh, white trashish. Um, it's white trashish enough the way it is. But this coupling here, as you'll see in a little bit when we finish up, gives us a nice area to um, put in the connector or the holding um, straps for your rod. So again, we'll take a little bit of a back view of the trough and you can see how nice that looks. And as you go on up, you can see how it curves. It's been curved when we heated it and we got the cap. We have not glued those caps on yet. I'm still thinking about how I'm gonna connect these rods together. So there you go. It's the finished rod holder, number one. Number two is laying on the floor over there and we'll get them together and I'll show you how we're gonna do the back ends. Okay, we're back. We've got both of our grooves, our trays cut. We've got them nice and smooth and we've finished up the back end. So I want to show you what we did on the back end. So what I did on the back end was I lined up the trays. I slightly cantered the trays outward, ever so slightly, so that when you put your rods in, they're at a slight tilt, so they're not up against each other as much. I'll show you when we put them in. I put a, an eye bolt through the back. Uh, you can see I've got the eye on one side, it's drilled through the back. These bungee cords are just the um, like tarp type cords you can get at Lowe's. They're a loop. I've got it in the back. You can see here, the bolt goes through it. So that's what holds it, the bolt holds it. And I took them up between the two holders so that they're both of the rod holders are coming up through the middle. So they can't drop and they can hang out the back. They can just hang right in this area, does no big deal. The next thing I did, which was a little unique, was I added, if you can see this, I added a, a washer on the inside and I added three nuts. The reason I added three nuts was to get, I could tighten them individually and make sure it would stay tight and it would give me spacing so that when I put my cord around, I had a place to wrap it around. So I used three nuts and then a large washer, and then I did another nut, tightened it all down, and then I took my Dremel cutoff tool and I cut the bolt off and I sanded it round. I sanded it super smooth. You don't want anything sharp, obviously, next to your raft. And so, and to catch fishing line on and who know, everything else in the boat. So I sanded it with the Dremel all the way around, which made it kind of a cone shaped so that the nut will not be able to come off. Um, I think that's important when you're bouncing around your boat, when you're driving to and from on really rough roads, every, every nut seems to get loose. So I'm hoping this will hold. So here we go. We got the bolt through the back, which will allow us to mount it easier. Um, my plan is to run a strap, a, um, an NRS strap over the top of this, which will also be held from the front side, um, of this bolt. The strap will be held on the front side where the rod connectors will secure from the back side. So give you an idea how this will work, I've got a couple of rod 
uh, butts here we'll put in. So we're going to take these rods, put them in here, you can see how it works. So the rods will just slide in, slide back. The bungee strap will come around and go right around the washer, just like that. This one's a little tight for this big reel. So all I have to do to loosen that up will be simply to um, undo the knot. I've got an extra knot in here. Don't use your teeth, kid. Um, I'll do that. I'll do that in a minute. The great thing about these bungees is this is how you can loosen and unloosen this nut. So for now, we'll leave it. But again, you, can, you see the point. You can adjust it. So we're going to take this. It'll go around. It, it might stretch over time, actually. Rod sets in there. Rod number two comes in. It slides in. It comes around and goes right around the eye, the eye bolt. So you can see that those rods, obviously I don't have the rest of the rod on, so they're, it's pulling them up a little bit. Um, but there's no upward pressure on these rods, so it's just a very slight upward pressure. It pulls pretty, uh, um, pretty much parallel. You can see those rods will not come out. And what I really like about it is they don't really hit against each other much because the way I've got the trays cantilevered out a little bit. Um, I probably will loosen up this one strap, although this is a bigger reel. Um, this one here is like the perfect size uh, on this side. So you can just uh, tweak it um, how you like. But anyway, that's how that works. So both of them are real quick disconnect. They'll come out and they're out. So what I like about these these uh, awning straps is that the nuts, there's nothing sharp about these. Um, they're not gonna hurt your reels. They're gonna set real nice on the rack as it's going down the road or down the river. So again, you can see the back end, how we have the eye bolt through um, with the three nuts and the washer to provide us both sides of connection. And then you can see that the, we'll grab the camera here. And you can see from the back side how it connects. Here, you can take a look here. And then you can see on down the uh, rest of the tubes how the channel goes and the curve to the left. Again, I'm gonna mount these on the right, the right side of my boat and the curve will be uh, right up towards the front. So next we'll show you, um, we'll take these upstairs and get these, we'll have them, we'll just tentatively strap them on the boat so you can get a chance to see how they'll look on the boat. Okay, we're back out here in the garage now and we have installed these onto the boat. And I'm gonna show you, I put them on just with a simple strap. We secured them at the back, we secured them in front of the trays so that the straps don't get in the way. And then ultimately we put another strap on the front, which you can see I took it to one of the D-rings on the boat um, to keep it up against the um, boat. I'll probably tweak this a little bit as time goes on. I may add a second strap and I may reheat this to kind of just make this be a little more in line with the other. It's not really that big a deal. It's just a cosmetic thing. You can see it kind of raised up from when I screwed it and cantilevered it and mess with it, but overall, really happy. Um, you can see from the back here that these are gonna be really nice um, to hook the rods. They'll just lay whichever side you're not using. Just goes right around. They work actually better than I thought they would. Um, very smooth in the trays. There's nothing to catch to get in the way. I'm really excited about these. Um, again, thanks for watching Tree Line Pursuits. I've got several hunting DIY backcountry videos in the works, and um, we'll have those out shortly. Thanks again.